a total solar eclipse cuts through major parts of North America, and a comet makes its closest pass to the sun. Let's take a look at what you can go out to see in the night sky for April of 2024. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. Welcome to your guide to the night sky. We begin this month with an event that millions of people have been waiting days, weeks, months, and maybe even years for. The great total solar eclipse cutting through major parts of North America on April 8th. The most important thing to begin with whenever we discuss a solar eclipse is how to safely view it. Most people under this path throughout North America will be under a partial solar eclipse, meaning that safe, protective solar glasses have to be worn during the entirety of this event. For those of you that find yourself under the incredible path of totality, it's only when the moon covers 100% of the sun for probably just a couple minutes that you'll be able to remove your glasses to see the incredible view of a hole in the sky as the moon completely blocks the sun. The incredible path of totality for this solar eclipse will cut through major parts of Mexico, the United States, and Canada on April 8th. And it's best to try to get as close to the center of that zone of totality as you can. Being closer to the center of totality can add anywhere from a few seconds to maybe a minute to your experience. If you're making a drive to the zone of totality like I am, plan ahead and look to see if a public library or park is hosting an eclipse party. I'll include some links in the description below to help you figure out where the nearest point of totality will be to you, and also consider using apps like Sky Safari to know the exact second when totality will begin and end if you find yourself in its path. This is a major event and please let us know of any questions that you have, and also please share your experience with this event in the comment section below. As we switch from the daytime sky to the nighttime sky, let's focus on our second major meteor shower of 2024 in the form of the Lyrids. Begin your night by going outside around 11 p.m. on the 21st, facing towards the northeast. Look for the brightest star just over the horizon in this part of the sky, Vega. In between Lyra and the Hercules constellations is where the Lyrids will appear to shoot from. Sadly, this year a nearly full moon will wash out all but the brightest meteors, making this a tough year for the Lyrids and limiting the numbers to probably less than 5 per hour. Between the solar eclipse and the meteor shower, the moon just seems to keep getting in the way of everything this month. Whether you want to see it or avoid it to do deep sky astrophotography, let's take a look at its phases, beginning with the last quarter moon on April 1st. New moon on April 8th, first quarter moon on April 15th, and a full moon on April 23rd. The moon makes several close passes to objects in the night sky, beginning with Mars and Saturn on April 6th, Venus on April 7th, Jupiter on April 10th, and M45 the Pleiades star cluster on April 11th. Moving away from the Earth and Moon, let's get deeper into our solar system by taking a look at the best views of the planets. Sadly, after several months of enjoying incredible views of it, we are losing the planet Jupiter to the horizon and to the Sun from our perspective. But there is at least a few more opportunities this month to see it before it gets too low after sunset. Go outside around 30 to 45 minutes after sunset on April 20th and look for Jupiter as it pops into view as the sky darkens. That night, Jupiter and Uranus will be very close to each other and will even show up in the eyepiece of my telescope at around 63 times magnification, showing roughly a one degree field of view. Uranus may be hard to see from the sky glow, but it's a fun challenge this month and one of the few things involving the planets in the evening sky. Let's switch our attention to the morning sky about 30 to 45 minutes before sunrise, where a very similar thing will be occurring, but this time with Mars and Saturn. But again, they will be very low to the horizon, and make sure you aren't looking for them in the east when the sun starts to rise. Everyone loves a comet, and this month we've got possibly one of the best of 2024 that's making its closest approach to the sun on April 21st. 
For those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, you're going to have to catch this comet very early in the month before it gets too low to the horizon and we lose it to the sky glow after sunset. To see it, go outside about 45 minutes after sunset and look towards the west. With a pair of binoculars, scan the sky around the constellation Aries to see if you can spot a small blurry cloud. If you own a telescope, see if you can get even more detail out of it and perhaps even a faint tail as the sky continues to darken. A great opportunity to find it will be on April 12th, when it will be right near the planet Jupiter. Using my pair of 10x50 binoculars, I'll be able to fit them both in the same field of view. At this point, it might even be possible to see Pons Brooks as a small, dim object with just the naked eye. By the time the comet makes its closest approach to the sun on April 21st, those of us in the northern hemisphere will be fighting the sky glow after sunset, making views more difficult even though the comet will be at its brightest. It's at this point, however, that our friends in the southern hemisphere will begin to enjoy Pons Brooks as it moves above the horizon and travels through the constellation Taurus in late April, with excellent views of it starting probably about 45 minutes after sunset. The southern hemisphere will continue to enjoy Pons Brooks as it dims every night while making its closest approach to Earth around June 2nd. As a bonus for those of you who find yourself under the path of totality for the total solar eclipse in North America, it's possible that Pons Brooks will be visible during those two to three minutes of totality when the moon completely blocks the sun and the sky darkens revealing brighter stars and planets. Although honestly, if you're under that path of totality, I would just enjoy your time observing the incredible view of the total solar eclipse. As we leave our solar system behind, let's go outside about an hour and a half after sunset to explore some incredible deep sky objects that are even beyond our own galaxy. Rising in the east, you will see the constellation Leo, and our main targets this month to kick off galaxy season, the Leo Triplet. This collection of three galaxies is made up of two Messier objects, M65 and M66, and one galaxy that Charles Messier missed, but would later be discovered by William Herschel, NGC 3628. These three galaxies show up through my 8-inch and 12-inch telescope as faint, dim, fuzzy blurs at about 60 times magnification, as the light from them has traveled 30 to 40 million light years to my eyes in my backyard. Through long exposure astrophotography, NGC 3628 really stands out due to it being edge on from our perspective, with the other two galaxies taking on a more classic spiral look. Take your time enjoying and studying these galaxies. I found my best results viewing them to be anywhere between 50 to 100 times magnification on most nights. Galaxy season is upon us and just down from the Leo triplet is a wealth of galaxies in the Virgo cluster but we'll save those hundreds of galaxies for next month. I've got another video covering more incredible deep sky objects that you can go out to see this spring using Sky Safari, and I'll be sure to leave a link to that video in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let us know about your experience out this month enjoying the solar eclipse, the comet, or anything else we discussed in our video in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support, and clear skies from late night astronomy.